We begin in Hong Kong, where thousands of protesters have marched to the Causeway Bay and Central Districts and occupy main roads. Hong Kong police say the gathering are unauthorized and have advised against travel to the areas. Earlier, protesters also rallied outside the British consulate. They sang the British national anthem, God Save the Queen, while waving Union Jack flags with chants asking the UK to, quote, save Hong Kong. They're demanding the British government to help them meet their political demands. Well, similar rallies were held earlier this month at the British consulate and at the U.S. Embassy last weekend. For the very latest, we now go live to our correspondent, Tang Bo. He is standing by for us in Hong Kong. Good to see you there, Tang Bo. Now, fill us in on the latest situation there. Zhou Yuan, the situation here is really chaotic in the downtown business district in, uh, on the Hong Kong island. And just like you just mentioned, that the gatherings are unauthorized. And although police have denied permission of a mass rally today in Victoria Park to the east of Hong Kong's central business district, protesters turned up early in the afternoon when anyway and marched through a downtown shopping district on the Hong Kong island. And many shops in the area, therefore, shattered. And protesters tore down and burned the banner with slogans of celebrating the 70th anniversary of the founding of China and they even burned the Chinese national flag and protesters also threw petrol bombs at the government headquarter building acting very aggressive and manic so much that one of them got himself on fire and they broke the road bricks and threw them at the building and later the water cannon vents from the police arrived to, cash, to cast out the, uh, the protesters with colored water which can mark the rioters. And the protesters tried to defend with unfolded umbrellas but that didn't work for them. And as the crowd approached the Admiralty Business District and police fired tear gas at the crowd as the protesters became more and more violent. And this morning, as you just mentioned, that hundreds of demonstrators rallied outside the British consulate in Hong Kong, asking for British support in their political campaign that has lasted for over three months. And demonstrators held similar rallies on September the 1st at the British facility and last Sunday at the U.S. consulate. And as protesters are pleading to former colonial power and the U.S. support, China's Central Political and Legal Affairs Commission published a uh, commentary in a social media on Friday saying that Hong Kong's young people should look north for economic opportunities in the Chinese mainland instead of anchoring their hopes on Western countries to solve their problems. And those who called on people to take to the streets have nothing to offer but empty words of democracy and freedom. Back to you, Chou Yuan. All right, thanks so much for the latest. Tom Bo reporting for us in Hong Kong. Yet another violent weekend there. Now, for more insights, let me also bring in Mr. Lawrence Ma from Hong Kong. He's the director of the China Law Society and the executive council chairman of the Hong Kong Legal Exchange Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Now, some of the demonstrators, they have been calling on the British government to protect its former colony. And similar rallies were held at the U.S. consulate last weekend. Why do you think protesters so keen on seeking help from foreign governments? Well, the major reason is many of these foreign governments, particularly the United States, uh, the United Kingdom and Germany, are in support of those protesters, notwithstanding their illegal um, acts. For example, the American is now introducing the Hong Kong uh, Human Rights and Democracy Act. If passed, if the act is passed, it would impose sanctions on Hong Kong and mainland officials allegedly suppressing the freedoms in Hong Kong by, for example, um, blocking their entrance into uh, America and also expropriating compuls on a compulsory basis any of their properties in the United States. Um, for of and they have a list of officials they are going to draft up, particularly some of the major officials in Hong Kong. Now Germany has voiced support uh, in a similar vein uh, against um, uh, Hong Kong officials and they are considering uh, adopting uh, similar legislation in imposing sanctions against officials in Hong Kong and mainland China. Horim Lawrence, stay with me. We're going to talk more about this. But meantime, the Democratic Alliance for Betterment and Pro Progress of Hong Kong is calling on the city's government to seize private developers' land for public housing. 
But the party wants the government to use a law called the Lands Resumption Ordinance that empowers it to forcefully take back private land for public purposes. And that could include public housing or the development of community facilities such as schools, parks, and hospitals. Before such seizures take place, some would be consultation with distinct councils before the chief executive and cabinet make a final decision. Landowners would also be compensated at the market value of the land. Now, Lawrence, let me bring you back on this. From a judicial perspective, how do you think the land resumption ordinance we just mentioned there will offer a way out of Hong Kong's housing crisis? Well, this sort of legislation is very common in a lot of common law countries, in Australia, in England. Whereas if the, there are insufficient lands, the government can impose an order um, to resume those lands and pay, paying the owner, the original owner, a, a fair compensation uh, by way of compulsory acquisition. Now this law has the lands re, uh, resumption ordinance has been legislated in Hong Kong since the year of 1900. It is a colonial imperial legislation which has been taken effect and the government over that many decades have used this legislation to resume lands to build public housings, to build public roads and for public purposes which are for the goods of the Hong Kong society and to um, uh, provide better accommodation for Hong Kong people. All right, appreciate your analysis and your perspective. Lawrence Ma joining us live uh, from Hong Kong there.